I figured out basically the math that is going on in your mind that is creating this self-doubt, this lack of control. And I was able to reverse architect that math to create a system from which you can operate from to create a sense of control. Where I'm asking you to start is to really understand yourself understand it has to start at the level of your mind, which will organically lead to best practices. Mm, I love that. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 186 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Today, I got to sit down with Tracy Pleshcourt, and I think you're really going to enjoy today's conversation. Now, Tracy is the founder of Self Made You, where she teaches people the concept of self-control. And it's such an interesting idea. I love the way she talks about it. I'm a huge fan of this conversation because as you guys know, I happen to believe that our beliefs and thoughts are what absolutely dictate our results. And Tracy has done something so cool in her entrepreneurial journey and in the way that she teaches, where she talks about this almost like it's just a math equation. Makes me so happy. And she's got such a unique angle to it. And the other thing I really love about Tracy's experiences is she uses her experiences in her teaching, right? So if you have struggled with overeating, if you struggled with over drinking, if you struggled with procrastinating, if you struggled with taking actions that take you off course, you know what I'm talking about? Don't text them when you're drunk. Like those those kinds of things that take you way off course or stop watching Netflix, go write your social media posts, right? Those kinds of feelings can really take over at any moment. And we can sort of feel like we're at the effect of those moments, as opposed to understanding how much control we actually have once we slow down enough to actually hear the thoughts. Now, Tracy really talks about this and I kept asking, but what do we do in the moment? But what do we do in the moment? Not asking for personal experience. Oh wait, totally asking for personal experience. I mean, we've all had those moments, right? You're going on in your day. Things are just gorgeous. You're doing everything you need to do. And then you have that one thought and it takes you completely off course. And the thought could be something like, I suck. Who do I think I am? I really deserve this entire glass. No F it. I should have the whole bottle of wine tonight, right? Those things that just take us way off from where we said we actually wanted to be. Tracy has made it her life's work to help all of us understand what to do in that moment and how to start to apply change quickly. I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation. I hope you get a lot out of it. So pop in those earphones and let's get to it. Tracy, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Thanks, Sarah. I'm happy to be here. So we are going to dive into all things self-control. Yes, please. Specifically for me around chips at about 4 p.m. That would be great. Before we do that, Tracy, can you tell me or tell all of us, why is this what you do? What is it about self-control? What drew you to this as your career? Yeah. So I come out of a corporate career. I was kind of climbing that corporate ladder for over 20 years in the advertising industry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely loved my time in that industry, being surrounded by creative people, getting to work on the biggest and the most exciting brands out there. But I also felt like I was constantly kind of operating against my own will, like nothing ever felt easy. Everything felt like a grind. And so I recognized it way back when. I also, while I was in that corporate world, I felt this very strong calling to do something more with my skills. My personal passion is all around mentoring, kind of inspiring people. I feel like I'm like the consummate cheerleader, like love all competitive sports, but it's not because of, you know, my ability to actually play sports. It's my ability to inspire people. So I really wanted to more pursue that. And that led me into becoming an entrepreneur. And wasn't it interesting that as I entered the world of entrepreneurship, I started to feel that same like self-doubt. I started to hear a lot of those same narratives that I was hearing that sounded like, you know, you don't know what you're doing or you're mm. the imposter syndrome or lack of control or, you know, other people can solve this, but you don't quite have that confidence or capability. And so I noticed it when I was a in the corporate world. Then I noticed it again when I was in my entrepreneurial life, I started to notice it as a mom and as a wife. And so I'm like, okay, what is it that is creating this 
feeling, this very unwanted feeling of like out of control, lack of control. And so as I really started to evolve in my own business as an entrepreneur, it started to become very clear on what topic I wanted to specifically address. And so I ended up becoming a life coach. I figured out basically the math that is going on in your mind that is creating this self-doubt, this lack of control. And I was able to reverse architect that math to create a system from which you can operate from to create a sense of control and Holy therefore cannoli. get any result you want. And so wow. um, my life coaching business has completely exploded with the onset of this system, you know, and I think human beings love a system that's repeatable, <laughs> you know, yes. that's actually simple, that actually mm-hmm. does what it says it's going to do, you know, it's yes. going to create a self-control and it doesn't matter what the context is. It doesn't matter if we're talking about controlling the outcomes of your business, of the sales within your business, of the marketing within your business. It doesn't matter if we're talking about your weight or, you know, you're limiting your risk of chronic illnesses and diseases. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if we're talking about healing relationships or creating new relationships. It's all within your control. And most people think in a very unintentional way that none of that is within their control, that it's either luck or it's something outside of them that they don't yet have and they're in pursuit of it. And that's not true. It's actually within you. You just need to know how to tap into it to create those results for yourself. So that's just a kind of a long winded way of me saying this system has unlimited applications. It is literally the self-control guidance system. All components are inherent within you. You just have never Never been taught how to tap into it. And so to answer the kind of the second part of your question, so that's what I do. Why I do it is not only because I started to recognize this was not just specific in my professional life. I wasn't only noticing it in my personal life. It's really, if you don't understand that you do have this control, you will experience this unwanted feeling and therefore creating unwanted results for you across the board. And that's Mm -hmm. only because you haven't yet been taught. And that really right there, I want people to hear this. Those people who are listening, who are thinking I'm broken, or you just don't understand. I'm so different. You don't know my circumstances. I don't need to know your circumstances. I promise you it's because you haven't yet been taught. And so I have two kids that one graduated last year in 2022 from college. My daughter is graduating this year from college. Neither of my children are graduating with the education, the formal education of how to go out into the world and achieve the goals that they most desire. They are not graduating with the skill set of how to solve their own problems. Mm. They have been taught what to think. They have not been taught how to think. And when I recognized that, and I recognized that was the root cause of all of my problems as well. I hadn't been taught how to think about them. I was taught what to think about them. So go out and find a solution and massive action your way to getting what it is that you want. That's what I I was taught to think. And instead, what you, what every human being needs is to learn how to think Mm -hmm. about what it is that you most desire. They need to be taught how to think about overcoming the challenges in their life. And so self-made you was birthed in 2020, right (laughs) in front of the pandemic. And I'll just be very honest and say my business was it was very pandemic friendly because I had this captive audience. <laughs> People wanted change. They mm. had the time on their hands. And so my business exploded in 2020 under this veil of I'm going to teach you how to think. When you know how to think, you can create anything for yourself absolutely anything, tangible things. You can create any feeling that you want. And, you know, most of us would say, if you're asked enough times, 
why are you doing this? Most people say, because I want to be happy. Well, here's the deal. It's available to you right now. You just need to know how to think. And so that's what we do. We teach people I love how to think. this. No, I mean, I, you're right. We could not be more aligned. You guys, we were talking before we hit record and we were both like, wow, this is going to be so aligned. I mean, I really believe this is true. The, the world is going to do what the world does mm-hmm. and what we decide to do about that and how we decide to approach that is everything. Yeah. But I have to take you back because you said something really cool, which is you figured out mathematically how we create, right? How we take the next step. Did you just freak out? Did you figure this out on your own? Was it about studying a whole bunch of different things and like a penny dropped? Like how the heck did you figure that out? I just want to go to that piece. I think that is so freaking cool. Yeah. And like, I've, I know I, as an entrepreneur, thought leader, whatever the heck you want to call it, right? Is that there's been these moments where something clicks because I'm reading three different books or I look at something differently and I'm like, oh my gosh, no one's ever said this before. No one's ever thought about it this way. Did you just totally freak out? Like you have yeah. to tell us the truth about that. Yes. 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 <laughs> I spent 2018, I spent that year getting certified as a life coach through the life coach school. And Brooke Castillo is the founder of the life coach school. And she has a tool called the model. And so when you become a certified coach of hers, you are immersed into the world of the model. And it made I'll never forget the day I tell the story all the time that I was on a walk, I had my earbuds in. And it was prior to me, you know, being a student of hers, I was literally just listening to her podcast. And she started talking about this model and how your thoughts 100% of the time drive the feelings or the emotions that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And then she went on to say that those emotions are what create your behavior, you Mm -hmm. act from those emotions. And most people think that, you know, actions are what create feelings or a result is what creates the feelings. They don't recognize that their feelings are not due to any one circumstance. It's due to how you're thinking about the circumstance. And Brooke said it in such a way that it was that penny drop, the light bulb went off and I was like, oh my God. Oh, (laughs) that makes so much sense. And I remember like turning on my heels, like I'm walking up this hill and I was like, wait, what is, what did she just say? And I rewound, I turned around, went back home, grabbed my tablet and my pen, and I drew it out because I'm such a visual person. I have to see things. And I sat there and I just looked at that and I kept thinking about what it was she was saying. I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. So that's where it started. And then I created like what I call the mind math formula. It is definitely rooted in her model, but I use it a little bit differently. And I do think of it as just math. Like Mm. two plus three equals five. You can't argue that. And your thoughts plus your feelings create your actions. Mm -hmm. You start to see that when you literally can put it down on paper and you see your experience unfolding in black and white, there's no arguing that. You right. now got the evidence that your brain needs and so desperately wants to actually be able to believe something. And I know that that's how the human brain works. So putting it down in black and white, explaining to people how this is simply just math mm. creates an unarguable. You can't debate that your thoughts are what ultimately create your results. And so we start there, like with all of my students, I always start with the neuroscience of the brain. And Mm -hmm. so this mind math becomes a tool that I use when I'm teaching my students how to self-coach, how to ask themselves questions that really reveal how dramatic their unintentional thinking is and how that unintentional thinking leads to experiences that most often in retrospect, they wish they didn't have. And so we can like circumvent that we can, you know, before that unfolding starts to happen, you can start to recognize the feelings, those unwanted feelings. And due to the mind math, you can actually be intentional, put it in black and white. It doesn't take long at all. But when you recognize how much control you have 
over your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, and your results. It's like, Ooh, this is kind of fun, you know, and you feel this sense of control. So I teach not only this little tool I create, if you take a step back, I teach what I call the self-control operating system, because what I really believe is that most people are operating with a sense or a lack of control. Mm -hmm. They think that all solutions, all goals are outside of them, that they need to, you know, either blame something or someone for not having what they want, or they need to maybe go out and find the program or find the marketer that's going to create the result that they want. And that's not true. I want to teach people how to think so that they create the feeling of self-control. And so when you said, I want to learn how to have control over those potato chips every night, right? (laughs) Most of us think of self-control as more of an action or an inact, like the ability to not go grab the plate of cookies or pour the glass of wine. And I want to teach people to think of self-control as like this feeling. It's almost like the confidence that Mm. you create your results. It's a responsibility so that you are no longer blaming people or things for your results. You're no longer looking outside of yourself. You're, you're actually taking on the responsibility. The, the control comes back to you and that feels so good. It It's so liberating, especially for the people who have lived a really long time feeling a lack of that. And so I especially love to teach this to younger people, you know, because yeah. they have such, they have way more of a runway, right? To actually yes. create these results that they want for themselves. So, right. but it is not lost on me that as I write that final tuition check for my daughter, I'm like, wow, you know, what would it be like if formal education actually included types of lessons into the curriculum? Like Gosh. what kind of world would we be living in actually took responsibility versus looking for the next person to, you know, point the finger at. Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. I wasn't even thinking about the, the, the pushing of responsibility, but rather even the training on how to think instead of being told what to do all the time, but to actually come back to self. And I especially think that's important for women, but all young people, right? There's such this pressure to do things this way. It's supposed to look like this. It's supposed to go like that. Well, but what if we think about it differently? And what if the way I look at myself is very different? And I think, I don't know, I really think you're onto something very, very cool here, but I love the idea as well, Tracy, that this is something that people can do quickly, right? Like you really sort of zeroed in on this idea that not only is this possible to hit the goals that you most desire, yeah. but it's also possible to switch the way this is operating really quickly. Can right. you talk to us about that a little bit? Because I know that's a really important piece for you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very normal for human beings to be operating from what I like to call their primitive brain. So mm-hmm. we all universally, we all have this three pound organ in between our ears called our brain. Okay. Now I want you just to kind of think about that brain split in half. The left part of your brain is more of your primitive brain. It's meant to be keeping you safe. It's meant to be keeping you alive. So it's constantly scanning for danger. It's trying to avoid pain. It's seeking pleasure. And the other thing that it does very, very well is it's very efficient, which it looks like habitually thinking the same thoughts over and over and over. It's almost like you're on autopilot. You don't even recognize the thought that, oh, I must keep breathing in order to live. Like that's, that's like very subconscious, but you know that. So it works to your benefit. It does truly keep you alive, but it also sabotages us when we aren't in any danger When we're just simply, you know, trying to understand what it is that we need to be saying to connect with our clients out there, the people who haven't yet found us, you know, so we're marketing and we are listening to our primitive brain narrative Mm. that's telling us, you know, who do you think you are? Or you don't really have the expertise or you really can't help them. That's your primitive brain trying to keep you safe. Like it does sabotage you because you're not in any danger. And when you're in today's 
like state of affairs, today's environment, we're not in this primitive state. So we do not need to be listening to that part of our brain, but it has become so habitual that the science part of it is that there's very well established neural pathways that keep us thinking those same sorts of thoughts. You're doing it wrong. You shouldn't have eaten that. You should be recording a podcast at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> you should be further along than you are by and, now, right? That's yeah, a good one. I mean, you yeah. and I as entrepreneurs, yeah. we could write books on this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, we all have those primitive brain thoughts. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't have them. What I teach people to do is to notice them mm -hmm. and to circumvent before the unfolding of a result that they don't want when they're listening to them. Oh, I want them, mm. I want them to just notice them. They don't need to compound any sort of shame or, you know, blame or any sort of deficiencies, disappointment because they're having them. No, we all have, remember, we all have a brain and all of us have a primitive brain part to that brain, but we also have the other half, which is scientists call it your prefrontal cortex, but it's I call it your prodigy brain. It's the more extraordinary part of your brain. It's the part of your brain where you can be intentional. Primitive brain runs on autopilot. It's very unintentional background type thinking that often we don't even notice that we're yeah. reacting to. The prodigy brain is where we can be really intentional. Mm -hmm. It's very, we can respond versus react. I feel like it's like the grown up part of the brain, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a lot of awareness, you know, necessary. And so I like to tell my clients, like, now that you know, the neuroscience, you know, you're not broken. You're just simply listening to your primitive brain. You've never been taught how to listen to your prodigy brain and respond from that. So mm. that's the crux of it all. Right. But here's the other piece of it that I think a lot of people miss because insight or knowledge of this stuff is only 20% of sustainable change or of the ability to create the results we want. The insight or the education is only 20%. You need application. Mm, yes. Application is the 80%. And here's what that looks like. If you have a bookcase full of self-help books, but yet you're still wondering, why have I not been able to lose the weight? Why have I not created the million dollar or the hundred thousand dollar business yet? Because I have all the books and I've right. actually read them. It's because you haven't been putting it into practice. And I'm not suggesting that it's just a one-off trial. Like mm. you've got to find what it is that you believe in. And now you need to practice it. Ask yourself what worked, what didn't work and what can I do different? Now that looks like refining. And then we turn it into a best practice. And with consistency, we start to see the results happening. But most people are like, I bought the didn't book. Work. Step one, <laughs> show, read the book. Step two, yeah. great, but I didn't put it into practice. I didn't myself what worked, what didn't work, what can I do different? And so there's that 20% insight when you're talking about it in the context of like the self-control operating system. Mm -hmm. I teach that self-control operating system. I call my lesson, my mini series, I call it mind over matter. And it's on my website. It lays out the self-control operating system. I teach it to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people every single week. So your audience, I highly recommend going there and getting it. But I want you to understand that when you understand that education, that's mm. only 20%. You have to then apply it. And what, that's Tracy, eight. what is that gap for most people? Because I love what you just said about how many people have self-help books. I call people course collectors, right? There's yeah. so many people have so many things. What is that gap? Do you think? And after studying, you know, the belief to thought, to emotion, to action, to results, math, Right? Like, like looking at that, what is that gap for people? What well, has that, people not apply? I think that often it is not 
really recognizing, not really being, you know, honest with what it is that you are actually thinking. It could actually look like a lot of toxic positivity. You know, that's just a buzzword, but I like to use it because I think everybody kind of understands what it is, you know, or the, the affirmations, you know, just keep saying it and, you know, until you believe it. Like that's not, I mean, that might get you a little bit of traction, but where I'm asking you to start is to really understand yourself, understand, and you can quickly do that through the mind math. You can very quickly understand what was it that I was thinking? What is it that I'm believing because of these neural pathways that were very well established, probably as a young child that I am reacting to that's creating my results. So it really starts with understanding yourself. And because if you don't understand that, that you are a human being with a part of your brain that's functioning the exact way it's supposed to be functioning, Mm -hmm. but, and you haven't been taught how to listen to the other part of your brain, when you don't understand that, or you don't believe that, then you're probably not going to create sustainable results. So we have a weight loss program that we just layer the self-control operating system onto the best practices of what I believe to be the best way to lose weight and keep it off for a very long time for the rest of your life. And it also creates metabolic health because my personal belief is weight loss becomes a byproduct of great metabolic fitness. And so that's what I want to teach people is how Mm. to live longer, right? And how to have more energy. And then weight loss becomes a byproduct. But if they believe that, you know, it's purely calories in calories out and has nothing to do with the thoughts that you're thinking, if they don't realize that they've been operating from their primitive brain that says you, you know, listen to a belief that your mom gave you when you were six that said you have to clean your entire plate before you eat dessert, or that you always order appetizers at a restaurant before your meal. Like these are silly little beliefs, but if you don't recognize that those are beliefs that you've been operating from, and those are the beliefs that you've been creating your results from, you're never dealing with the root cause, right? The root cause is a belief or even more dramatic than that. You might have a belief that you are just fundamentally broken or that you are Uh, you know, genetically predisposed or that you're big boned. Like there's all the spectrum of thoughts can be from, you know, very innocent, kind of silly, you know, you must clean your plate because they're starving children across the world. You know, it could be those kind of thoughts, but they could also be very punitive thoughts, very punishing thoughts that you don't even realize. Yeah. living your life from. So to answer your question, it really does require you to get honest and to really, you know, dive deep in understanding how did you get Mm. to where you're currently at? What has created your current experience? And like I said, you can't argue it when this becomes your lived experience. Nobody's going to argue with me on whether this (laughs) is accurate or not. So that's why I love this tool because I'm a very visual person. I know that when I see it, I can make sense of it. And so Mm. i make it very visual for people. And then once they see, oh, this is what I was believing. And this is what's created my results. Now I teach them how to reverse architect it. Yeah. So now we get intentional using the exact same mind math. We just get intentional about it. And then they start feeling this sense of control because they see how, when they solve problems, when they achieve goals at the level of their mind, That's where we start. We do not start with a checklist and say, here's the best practices. Just go out and do it. And I'll be your accountability coach. No, 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 no. It has to start at the level of your mind, which will organically lead to best practices. Mm, I love that. So when, let's say somebody's listening, right? Can you put us in the moment? Let's say someone has said, okay, I really got to stop with the red wine every night. For example, I hear that a lot from, from people that kind of started in the pandemic and it's like kind of hung around, right? Yeah, so let's say somebody's yeah. recognizes is not good for them. Yeah. They really want to stop doing yet every night. There's like, oh, how did this glass of wine get into my hand? Right? Like there's sort of that feeling right. in that specific moment, given the speed, yeah. given their understanding of themselves, what could they pick up in that specific moment to help them move through that in a way that would be healthier for them? Yeah. 
Okay. So I, I can relate to this because almost every change your mind program that we have as an offering within self-made you to date, I should say, has been created because it was either a, a personal challenge of mine or it was yeah. a personal goal of mine. So I do feel like an expert and I do feel like I have the best practices. And I was somebody who I would consider myself an over drinker. You know, Mm -hmm. I had to realize the reason why I was over drinking every single night is because my thought was, I need this. I deserve this. Like Mm. I literally would come home from work and I would have all the thoughts that, oh, today was hard, or I'm just going to have one glass while I make dinner, or Mm -hmm. I need this to take the edge off, or Mm -hmm. I deserve this because it's been a stressful day. Those are all thoughts. Believe it or not, those are not circumstances. Those are thoughts. And they're very, yeah, they're very dramatic, primitive brain thoughts. And so I would put that down on paper on the thought line, not, it's not the circumstance. It's my thoughts. Mm. Those thoughts made me feel very entitled. And when you're feeling entitled, how do you behave? Of course you pour the glass of wine. Of course you do. (laughs) This is for me. Yeah. That kind of an energy. Look how great I am. I get to drink this now. Like when you say entitled, that's sort of what comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then you start to understand, okay, why is this happening night after night? Sometimes it's happening. And I feel like I'm actually drinking against my own will. Like there's like this cognitive dissonance because I'm thinking, wait a minute. No, no, no. I want to stop drinking or I want to drink more moderately, but why am I still doing this? Mm. Because you still believe the thought I need this to take the stress off or take the edge off, which Mm -hmm. then makes you feel entitled. So of course that it has you behaving in that way. So we got to get to the root cause. That feeling of entitlement is really the root cause. I want to teach people how to have a feeling of self-control because if their deepest desire is to be more moderate with wine drinking, the thought of, I need this to take the edge off is not going to lead to the result that you want. There's no way. It's impossible, right? Yeah. And so- I want to help them create the self-control that will lead to whatever desire they want. And so it's really fundamentally starting with understanding yourself and what, what's leading to the results that you're currently experiencing. So So in that moment, it would really be about understanding which thoughts are driving the show. Yeah. So you and I both know uh, we have a lot of shoulds as entrepreneurs. We're always, you know, I I love Mm -hmm. saying we're shitting all over ourselves. <laughs> I should have done this and I should have done that, right? It's so easy to be thinking that way because those are well-established neural pathways. But when I am self-coaching, when I'm really aware of that thought that makes me feel inadequate or disappointed in myself, and then I can ask myself, and when I'm feeling disappointed, what do I do? I often before I even know it, I find myself standing in front of an open refrigerator or an open pantry door. Like that's the way I behave when I'm feeling that way. So you have to understand what your thoughts are leading to in regards to an emotion and how those emotions have you behaving. And there is a neural pathway that's very well established that looks like a habit. So Mm. we are all about like unwinding that. And so it's not because you're broken. It's not because you're a bad person. It's because your primitive brain is in the driver's seat. So we Mm want to shift to operating from your prodigy brain and really questioning that thinking. So we've got that thought of, I need to take the edge off. Okay. Like in what ways, like, can I do that? We know most of us who love our wine at night, we don't stop and question that thinking. We just go and pour the bottle of the glass of wine. So self-coaching is really, it slows you down. Mm. It has you asking questions. It pulls you out of autopilot and puts you into intention. And you can either sit down and do this exercise. Most of my clients can just do it on the fly. It takes a matter of seconds, but they learn to question that primitive brain thinking because it's almost always a lie. Primitive brain thinking is meant to keep you safe and 
arguably most of us are not in a dangerous environment. So it's almost always a lie. It's very dramatic. And so if you, when you learn how to question it from your prodigy brain, you have to know it's there first and foremost, but then you can start to question it. And it, it, extinguishes like that urge that you're having that you're thinking, yeah, this all sounds great, Tracy, but you don't know my urges. Mm -hmm. I do. (laughs) Believe me, I do. I have struggled with overeating. I've struggled with over drinking. Like I understand urges and I understand the intensity of them. You can Mm -hmm. extinguish those simply by questioning those primitive brain thoughts. You're just simply running on autopilot, believing that. I love that. And I love to this idea because so when you say, no, really, I do understand. I always like to remind all of us that especially, I love that you call it the primitive brain, right? But those thoughts, those attacking thoughts, those woe is me thoughts. I love that you're calling them dramatic. Every time you say that I giggle because I love it. It's like, it's like a silent movie. Oh, poor me. I had to, I, I have to take the edge off. It's like that, that drama that gets pulled in when there's an urge or a habit or, or an addiction that's coming in to sort yeah. of throw us off course, right? Is that none of us are that special. We all tend to have very, very similar thoughts. Like I always love that. We always joke around over here. It's like people go, how did you know I was thinking that? I'm like, cause I think it too. Like we all have these thoughts and I love how you're helping people, Tracy, just really slow down and start to question those and look at what actions and what behaviors are coming after those thoughts take the wheel. What happens to the car? It's like, let's just slow that down for a second. Like, oh, it just grabbed the wheel. Are you going to keep it there? I just love this idea of slowing it down enough to actually start to question. It's so great, Tracy. I really love it. And it has just been so fun chatting with you today and hearing more about this. And if someone's listening and they're like, I need me some more Tracy, where (laughs) do you love to hang out? Where can people find you? You know, I, the easiest place to to kind of take advantage of all of our resources, connect with me and my community. Because if you are somebody who is really convinced that you are kind of that special, unique snowflake and nobody understands, you know, how broken you really are, I want to encourage you to get involved with a community because then you will quickly see, oh my gosh, Mm. other people have these same dramatic thoughts. Yep. Yeah, they do. And they have just decided, at least the students in my community, they've decided to roll up their sleeves and get to work and, you know, create the life that they want, create the results that they want, overcome the challenges that they have. So Mm -hmm. that's the only difference. And all they're doing is putting to practice, applying the tool, the self-control operating system. They're operating their life with a sense of control, but it isn't magic. It really does require you to roll up your sleeves, understand it, and then apply it. So my website is the best place to go where you can get all the free resources. We've got the Mind Over Matter three-part lesson that your community gets a discount utilizing the coupon code that I know you'll give them in the in the show notes. But I promise you it's the best. At the discount, it's the best $13 you'll ever spend because you will understand how this operating system can be applied to your life, to your big goals, to the challenges that you might be struggling with. So yeah, go to go to selfmadeyou.com. Love it. I love it. Tracy, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I can't wait to hear how this continues to evolve. And yes, please continue with a university that teaches this. That is so great. We all need it. I hope you get to come back soon. Thanks so much, Sarah. 